room. Right. Thank you for doing this, Chado. Yeah. I'm I've been good. asking you for how long? A while now, bro. A while. <laughs> a while. But I'm glad I'm here. So, if no one was to know who Chado is, who's Chado? <sighs> that's, a, that's a good question. I'd just say, like, I'm just a creative from Hull, the north side of the city, though. I always make sure that's that's in there. I'm an awful boy, proud. But yeah, just a uh, a working class boy who was just 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 a creative in Kingston upon Hull. Yeah. So yeah. it's in the in what type of music genre would you say? So like people, this is where it gets a bit like technical sometimes. Like people say you a grammar artist, you a rapper. What what are you like? And I always just say I just make rap based music. Like. Yeah, I just make rap based music, man. I might do a gram tune, I might do a, a rap tune, I might jump on the funky house, do a UK garage tune. Just rap based music, that's all I make. So you told me, was it last week you was in the studio in London? Yes. So from a creative standpoint, do you prefer to have the music first or do you prefer to write lyrics first and then put them on top of the music or I think it all just depends. Like so I could be just cooking in the kitchen or having a cup of tea and I might just think of some lyrics like don't even I haven't thought of a beat just thought of some bars write it down in my phone and then that's like sometimes and then sometimes I will get the beat first and I'll write to the beat it all just depends what, what process and what, what sort of mood I'm in so from a on a process standpoint then so what is your preferred route of doing things I'd probably say what I not what what normally happens is I receive the beat I'll receive the beat and then I'll I'll write some bars to the beat, basically. That's yeah. normally what happens. Okay. So I would say that, yeah, that's probably my preferred option. And you mentioned about you've got a new studio. Yeah. So what's do you prefer people to be in the studio live with you or do you, even if they're sending your music across? You know what, man? I haven't mastered, like, and I'm sort of jealous of people who can just go in the studio and, like, on the spot create, like some magic straight away like me i'm normally someone who writes at home then i take what i've written into the studio it's re very rarely that i'm in the studio and i'm and something comes and we record it it's normally me getting the getting the beat or getting an idea <clears throat> and then i'll take it into the studio that's normally what happens that's normally the process so if it, is it that type of process then with it being grime or with it being rap with anything with anything uh, any sort of genre of music, man. That's that's normally what happens. It'll normally be outside and then bring it inside to the studio. I mean, I have done, I have like been in the studio and wrote stuff before, but that is normally the process. Is normally I write at home and then bring it in. So, do you have like a preferred target audience sort of thing? Uh, you know what? It's crazy. It's a good question. That no, I, I don't like. You'd, like some of the messages that I get from like the fans and stuff, like all different ages. Like people who've come to my gigs, people who listen to my music, it's all different ages. Like when I look at like my Spotify stats, I would say like the main people that listen to my music is like the 18 to the 24 bracket. But like I said, like I do receive messages from like older people, like in their 50s, like in their 40s, who, who, who vibe to my music as well. And then like real young kids, like all the young kids on the estate and stuff, like all the kids that I used to like teach as well at like Marvel and my other job at LearnFit, they all love it as well. So I would, if I was going to say it's most popular with probably from 11 to 25. Oh, fair. Yeah. Okay, so <coughs> you've got your, your bracket, your demographic <coughs> that you aim for. Let's go back to the history side of things. Mm. So what initially got you into this type of music? Okay, so... I grew up in a household where music was like the 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 main thing, like the epicenter. Like we, my mum used to throw like loads of like house parties when I was younger. Like my earliest memories is just my mum throwing mad house parties on Norfolk. Like obviously it's it's like the whitest estate ever. Like well it was, and like just loads of black people just coming to like this this house. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Like and it was just mad. Like party until like the early morning listening to obviously like like reggae and like rap and r&b and stuff like that and my sister was like heavily into uh, music as well she was heavily into like like the fugees like lauren hill like mace dmx like 
wide spectrum, but like it, it definitely educated me and it made me want to like sort of, I wouldn't say maybe want to start doing music, but it made me have an interest, like albums, like just getting the album cover and going to like HMV and getting like, like looking inside and the credits and who's produced what song and like they'd always have like a message at the end to like the fans and stuff like that and that was always so sick to me so because my sister's album collection was crazy like and it was so versatile as well so she and my mum definitely was a big influence in me starting to love music and then I would say like me as an artist or me like messing around with raps it all happened because of a kid called Crafty one of my one of my best mates big him up Danny Craft like at the time, like I didn't really know it. No one was really spitting back then. No one was really doing anything like that. I mean, I'm sure there was, but in my circles, he was the only one I knew who was spitting. And then he was like, "Oh, you need to just like you need you should try it out. Like you love rap music, like because I used to like do little daft freestyles and stuff." And he was like, "Oh, you're pretty good actually. So why don't you just like start writing?" Did but back then, like when I first started rapping, like I started rapping in American accent. Like, oh, so you want to stay in true to your roots? No, not back then. Like we're talking, like God, I was like fourteen, fifteen, <laughs> rapping an American accent, freestyling an American accent, and he was just like, "Bro, now nah, you can't, you can't do that, man." <laughs> so yeah, I just started writing raps and like just freestyling at like house parties and yeah, and it was all like fun and games and stuff. And then I wrote like my first song when I was about sixteen, seventeen, called Dreams. I went to London. Uh, to record it, a studio in Peckham, because uh, my mate Will, who was in Hull at the time, he was doing music and he said, I'll oh, come to Peckham and like record this song. So I did, came back to Hull. I thought I was like a superstar, man. I had my one song. I thought I was the <laughs> guy. And then, like, do you remember like infrared days when you were yeah, transferring stuff yeah. over infrared? Like, it sort of went like mini viral, like around Hull, them times. So I had a little bit of local, little. My first start of my celebrity sp- status. Yeah, my first, <laughs> my first bit of uh, celebrity love. So that was sick. And then, yeah, I was just writing raps and doing songs and stuff with Crafty. And then there was another kid involved called Rory, and we used to go to Rory's like studio and his back room, and we used to record songs like on like rubbish software, like proper basic stuff. But it was good at the time. And then this was like MySpace days and stuff. So we, we created like a little buzz, definitely. Uh, and then I went to uni and I sort of like sacked it off a little bit. Didn't really do it. Obviously, always still loved it. Still rap sometimes to my uni mates and stuff, but nothing serious. And then, cut a long story short, when I left uni, came back to Hull in 2010, started working on a mixtape called Not Your Average Spitting. Recorded that in my mate Crafty's room because the stu- cause Rory sort of fell out of love with the music by then. So we moved the setup to to Crafty's house on Orchard Park, and then that's when we both recorded a mixtape, uh, and yeah, that was like the start, oh. really. So who was your? So rewinding a bit, so mm. from an influence perspective, yeah, what were the key influences to try and get you into the scene, and what kind of? Um, so did I listen to growing yeah. up? Yeah, loads of people, man, like. This is a tough question because I listened to, like, I was heavily influenced by, like, obviously American artists. So people like Nas. Nas is, like, my favourite rapper of all time. I listen, used to listen to a lot of Tupac, uh, Biggie, just like what everyone listened to, like, Jada Kiss, Fabulous is one of my favourite rappers as well. Coming up, I used to listen to a lot of him. And then Channel U came about. Oh, I remember Channel U. Do you know what I mean? And, like, even you used to, really. Did you used to text in and that? Well, I didn't use to text Yes, you in. did. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't use the text him, but Channel U was like I think the turning point. But even before Channel U, like so the first sort of like UK sounding song I ever heard was Oi by More Fire Crew. Uh like Lethal B, Aussie B and Nico, like what we used to go to Notting Hill Carnival every summer. My auntie used to live in Stoke Newington. Uh and we used to go every every summer and I remember hearing like, that song for the first time, Oi, and seeing the video and just seeing like UK guys like sounding cool, man, and spitting. And I thought, yeah, they're sick. And then like, yeah, and then Channel U came about and yeah, man, that's when I think my life just changed. Like that's when I started like liking UK music more. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so when you 
got on board with this UK type yeah. of scene. Yeah. How would you say that's changed from what it was when you first got into it to what it is now? Oh, massive. Like, just obviously the quality of music's better. The quality, because the videos on there were mm. trash, weren't they? Mm. Some of the videos on there were whack, but I just loved it. But yeah, the videos have changed. Everything's a lot more glossy and now everything's a lot more professional. Everyone, a lot of people are making some serious money now. People are getting like number ones and having number one albums and touring the world so it's changed massively because like i said when like no like when i first started listening to grime and stuff and like uk rap really no one was really listening to it too much in hull anyway so like it's just it's so sick to see like the journey i never really used to hear it in any of the clubs and yeah. things like that it's, only, it's definitely in there now you know yeah, i've yeah. been into places yeah but um i think what i through my brother my brother uh, you know opened me up to like the underground mm, side of it mm, mm. um and i think what i'd been exposed to was Can I have a water uh, yeah go for yeah, a minute cheers. so when i was like so i'm talking 14 15 16 mm. it was a it was a lot more aggressive back in the yeah, day yeah. to what it is now yeah and i felt like it, the the actual the um how can i how can i say it the the message in the yeah. music is totally different now to what it was back then. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, at the end of the day, whatever that message was, mm, was what mm, they were going through mm, at that time. Mm. Um, would you say your message in your music has changed as you've grown up sort of thing? Yeah, I mean, even going back to what you just said, like there's still like some mad music still out. Like, I'd, I don't know if you're aware of like drill music. I've heard of drill music, yeah. So, like, drill's basically what, like, Graham was, like, in the early days, and these guys have got no filter, these drill kids. Like, a lot of the videos have been taken off YouTube. Like, they basically, they're basically... What do you think to that, getting taken off YouTube for someone's message? <sighs> do you think it's the right thing to do? Illegal. I think... Uh, it's, it's, it's a touchy one, that. It's a technical sort of see I don't know how in depth do they go yeah they go real in depth and like obviously kids have been murdered and stuff and ah. so the t some, some of them are glorifying that and bragging about it and so that's the I mean I don't know if I'm, I'm I mean obviously I'm not from that world mm. I get what you mean like expression is expression do you know what I mean so like there's no limitation to art they're just saying like you said they're just talking about what's happening in their life yeah so I get that it, it's just I don't know I don't know where I sit with that it's it's a tough one, especially when obviously keep people are dying, mm. young kids are dying. Do you know what I mean? It's a mad social problem. Uh, so the music still is out there, which the music's still aggressive. There's still a lot of aggressive music out there. Definitely, the music's got a lot more glossier, and obviously, a lot of these artists have realised like we have to dumb it down, and we have to tone it down. Well, it's what to, sells, isn't it? Yeah, so to, to make money. But there, there is some mad songs that have made a lot of money and, and charted, and they're talking some madness. And just rewind it, you you only got to think about the old, when I first got into the rap scene, mm. was Eminem. Yeah. You know, a lot of Eminem stuff back mm. in the day, you didn't realise it when you was just listening yeah, to it as a yeah. young kid. But now when you look back, back to it. yourself, there was a lot of aggressive yeah. stuff out there. You know, to, not just talking about drug taking, there was, he talked about murder in yeah. some of his songs and things like that. But I don't know how he got away with it. <laughs> I don't know how he got away with it. Yeah, but yeah. So but going on to like your subject sort yeah. of thing. So your message in your music. When, I, when I've listened to it previously, mm. you've mentioned before about staying deep within like what your roots are. Mm -hmm. So going back to your history. So where are you originally from? You know. So I'm I'm a born and raised on Norfolk. Uh, my mum's Nigerian, so I'm of Nigerian descent. Uh, yeah, basically, grew up with my mum and my sister. Uh, yeah, just, I always call myself the Norfolk Nigerian, man. That's me. I the think that's what's as well, give you your individuality. Because yeah. you've been so proud of where your roots are. Yeah, and man. Express that into your music. Definitely. So. Going back to your question about, like, has my, mu has, my, has my music changed? I'd say definitely. I think when I first came out, especially when I started... I think I, w I started quite, so I always say my entry point was my first mixtape, 2011, mm -hmm. Not Your Average Spitting. I was quite raw. I'd just say like a lot of tongue and cheek stuff. I still say a lot of tongue and cheek stuff now, but it was definitely more just that, more random, nothing, not, not too much concepts really to my raps. And then I think when I, it all changed when I, when I went to the Warren uh, and I met a guy called Stu Baxter. I, I don't know if you Stu know, Baxter. yeah, Stu's yeah. like a legend. He's like my big bro. 
uh, my mentor as well. And they've helped a lot of people down yeah. the Warren Records yeah. as well. And he was, he's the one who sort of said that, Chad, you need to start making songs, actual songs with like hooks, bridges. Like, because I was like, oh man, how come they're not playing my song? Because I'd like hand my songs into like BBC Introducing. The song wouldn't even, it wouldn't even be my beat. I'm swearing and doing, I yeah. like, I didn't even know anything about radio edits or anything like that then. Do you know what I mean? And he taught me all that. And I think as well, when we're going back from, so you've made your first track, for example, yeah. Snake, right? And then you, you, you give your ego a little massage, yeah. you're feeling good about yourself. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's the same in our scene. Mm. You know, you can be spending all the time making the music and you're putting it out there a little bit and everyone's saying it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're sending it out to labels and labels are just either not interested yeah. and they're not signing it. So yeah. it's like it almost deflates you and you yeah. start questioning yourself. Yeah, you're thinking, yeah. you know, God, am I up for doing yeah, this? Because the amount yeah. of rejection that's involved, so that's kind of what you're saying. Yeah, now. well, I, and I needed it, man, because I want, I want, for one, I want even good enough to get played on like even local radio at the time. And for two, I needed a song. Do you know what I mean? And then my first song that I sort of put out, what I was sort of happy with, was a song called Naming Naming Lights and that's when BBC introduced it and Humberside started supporting me. So like I say, but like yeah, them the music then was quite I'd say like quite conscious rap really. It was all about like empowerment and you can achieve anything that you, you want to if you put your mind to it. And I am still I still have that message, but I think now I'm I'm I've I've changed sort of my style again. Like I'm just unapologetically me. Yeah. Where before I you could maybe accuse me of sort of trying to make a song that would get played on radio. But now I just don't care, man. I just do what I like because I think I'm more confident now. Do you think that's more of a, it's, a, it's inevitability when, say, like, what's your aim, your objective? Where would you, where do you foresee where you'd like to be? Have you got a, like you, a, an idea? I think my, my aim is to be one of the biggest exports in this country. Like, I feel like you've got him high and I mm. think like I can do it. Like you see people from, because obviously there's no, there's no hiding that my genre of music is very London driven. Do you know what I mean? All the big players are, are London boys. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but th there is now some guys from outside of London. But I feel like for my, for the county, and there's some sick artists in in Yorkshire. But I feel like we need we need someone to to be the guy. Do you, I totally agree because I think what you've got there is you've got your niche yeah like our industry can be extremely saturated especially in our region like yeah. let alone i think you could, off the top of my head there's four individual house nights in our own city okay so you've got your own niche yeah mm. everyone's when when you're thinking of grime rap however you want to call it sort mm, of thing mm. um when you think of yorkshire i guarantee they think of you mm. so that's something that is extremely special and yeah. unique to what you've got and London, think of it on the other side. Yeah. London is just completely saturated. Saturated, yeah. And obviously, there's been times when back in the day I used to get frustrated. I'd be like, oh, if I lived in London, I'd be bigger. Yeah. But then I took myself out of that space and I was like, be proud of where you're from and just go 100 miles an hour and just try and represent every day and like just try and be different. Because I am, I'm different. I don't think there's anyone out there like me. So my yeah. aim, going back to your question, is just to really put and solidify my city on the map have to like I say there's, I don't look at really anyone locally as my competition I never have done like I don't look left or right and 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 and, and want to be them do you know what I mean like for me it's it's them boys like in in the south man yeah so like when we're saying you know like I said about the positives about having a niche mm. but one of the benefits that we've got with having so many house nights and people in the area is that you've got that support mm. you can ask for advice off people mm. or you can even bring people into your studio yeah. for example you don't really have no, that luxury have that. unless you're say bringing someone up from London or you yeah. have to go there yeah so how do you deal with that sort you've of had thing? to self-learn and I think yeah. that's where a lot of people get it wrong in Hull in terms of I'm not, I can't talk about your, your lot scene but I could talk about I hate this word but the urban scene mm. in, in, in Hull a lot of artists are just quick to give up. It's like, oh, no one's helping me. Get bring the fat lip out and that like complain, complaining all the time on social media. Go out and help yourself, man. No mm. one helped me. No. Do you know what I mean? I had to go find out. Like, the, like I didn't know anything about the industry. Didn't know about PR, marketing, all that rubbish. You know what I mean? Like I had to, and like this is where I'm gonna say like it, when you're in bigger cities, you do get help though because mm -hmm. there's there's PR companies, there's marketing companies, there's loads of managers, there's yep. like, there's a scene, but in Hull, 
In, for urban music, there's not. So I get why people feel disheartened, but if you really want it and you really want to want to achieve something, you'll go learn everything yourself. Yeah, I think it's, uh, again, going back from when he was young, Yeah, and I think, you know, we're talking, you have the support now in London, mm. through things like social media, mm. when you was coming through the ranks mm. in this type of genre, mm -hmm. There was absolutely nothing. nothing. There was no support. So you've literally had to learn yeah. it all yourself. Yeah, no artist that I looked up to, really, in in Hull, in my in my sort of music that I could go seek advice from. And that's me being real. Like there was, I don't think there was there'd be anyone qualified enough to give me advice. Now I give loads of advice down to to the young kids, but at the time on on the come up, they weren't really. Any, the only person I could ask for advice from was Stu Baxter. Mm. From the Warren, and like I say, I've 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 said already in this podcast, like he he's really helped me out, man. So how supportive have the Warren been for you? Massive, massive. It's a free studio, mm. like you you can go there and record for free. Obviously, if you're at a set, certain age bracket, I think I think it's from like fourteen to twenty five. You can be to record there. So anyone listening, like if you want to make music, make sure you go there because they've got a great studio. They've got great people there. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Very friendly staff that they're, they're there to support. And yeah, it really helped me. It's where I sort of got my relationship with Dee's kid uh, through the Warren. Obviously, it's where I met Stu, met so many like local musicians there. It's a great hub. So yeah. what made you get into contact with Dee's kid then? How did that all come about? So Dee's, when I did Not, so not Your Average Spitting, going, going back a bit, like I sold like over like 300 copies of that at three quid a pop. So like, I'd just be in town with my rucksack, going up to people. Oh, do you like rap music? Well, mm. like proper old school. Because obviously, I I got I got that from like when I used to go to Camden. If you go down back in the day, if you used to go to Camden, there'd be loads of people trying to shop mixtapes and stuff like that. So I got that idea, and I, I don't know what happens. Has that been stopped now? Because you don't see I, that. No, as much because anymore. you know why? Because everything's digital. Ah, I suppose so. Yeah. So no one listens. People have got cars, and they don't even have a CD player in it. Used to be everywhere. Every <laughs> every type of gig you'd go to, there was people yeah. buying CDs outside. So. Uh, I got that idea and yeah I was just just used to go into town centre and then obviously when I used to do gigs I used to sell them at gigs I used to go like outside like position I did I do remember yeah. outside position outside doing position it. trying to sell t trying to sell uh, CDs so yeah from then so DZ uh, basically must have got his hands on a CD well I think well he did he got his hand on a CD and I remember him sending me a message on Facebook saying oh yeah I rate your music I make beats I'd love to work with you. I'd love to do some stuff. And then he started working at the Warren, like part time, like helping out out there, trying to enhance his skills, working in a studio. And we made, we made a song called Dumb and Dumber. And that was the first song that me and him made together. He produced the beat and I spat the bars. And then we've just been really close ever since then. Because I think that's what did, after, you do lockdown together, don't you? Yeah, yeah, lockdown. So, so, but, so lockdown was, to be fair, like lockdown uh, started with me, the kid who I mentioned before, Crafty, yeah. and the other kid I mentioned before called Rory, and his little brother. So that it was us for lockdown, and then Rory just lost interest in music, so did his little brother, uh, and then and Crafty went to us. So I, I, after Crafty released his mixtape, demonstrating ver versatility. No, didn't you do what, is it Audacity part of lockdown? Yeah, yeah, so Audacity is like, it's our event, lockdown's event. Yeah. So, yeah, when Crafty went Australia, I was just flying the lockdown flag ah, on my right, own okay. for a long time. I was, I was, Even though I was on my own, when I was rapping, I was still shouting out lockdown. That's not easy to do. No, no, mate. I was just holding it down by myself. And then, like I say, I, I got real close with DZ. I was like, DZ, you know what, bro? Like, why don't you, why don't you just join in with this thing that I'm doing? And then, yeah, he jumped in. And then we've got Jawa DJ as well. So he's he's in lockdown as well. So it's a free man team. Ah, so that was your initial idea behind lockdown, the same music what you're doing now, is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it's just the it's just the brand man, it's just the collective. So Obviously you got me. So what was the difference between Audacity and Lockdown? So it was Audacity Presents Lockdown? It, yeah, it was Lockdown Presents Audacity. Oh lockdown sorry, yeah, the yeah, other yeah, way yeah, around. Yeah. yeah, that's all it is, yeah, basically. Ah, okay. So lockdown obviously is the music, we do the merch. Yeah, we've seen you, mate. Yeah, we do the we do the we do the, we do our nights, obviously. So and we just yeah, we're just trying to expand all the time. So uh, from the nights perspective, yeah, where did you start off? How long's that a night been going? Yeah, so 
we did our first night at Fruit. So basically, I'll, I'll, I'm probably going to upset a few people here, but you know what? I don't care, man. <laughs> people who know me well now, I'm not bothered about ruffling feathers. I was, I was sick. The reason how the night came about is because I was sick of going out and hearing the same music all the time. Like you know, like I feel like urban music in Hull at that time, the DJs were stealing a living. There yeah. was, there was still playing like Fat Man Scoop. Uh, just like what other rubbish songs was the playing like, like I, just just that minging minging like R and B stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, just oh, what other songs is the man like? I think when it well like, like, like nasty think, like nasty girl and that like, and I know Biggie probably would be turning his grave. Yeah. I think girl. as well with having <laughs> the experience that you've got with probably your music. Yeah. You know, you was well educated. You're well passionate mm -hmm. about it. So going into, especially been going out from, obviously you only started going out at 18. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> being, being uh, around it for such yeah. a long period of time and then hearing the same, same music, music recycled over oh, and over again, was, that drove your passion towards yeah. putting an event on. I was doing, my, yeah, like I say, because cause I'm quite clued up on, me, obviously, my, my own sound of music. like, And I just think thought the people were just getting sold short. Like, these DJs playing this same trashy music. And I get it, like... They want to get the punters through the doors, but how are the punters going to know about music if they're not getting educated? If they're not getting, if if a new song's not coming in like week by week, you can't just keep on playing that rubbish, Jar Rule, like nothing. Trey songs, Trey all that song, stuff. nothing against Jar Rule and and people like that, but it's rubbish music, man. Like it's there's a time and a place. Like if you're gonna do like. There is a time and a place because I feel like if you're gonna do them sort of na uh, music, do a night, do a throwback night. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Don't do it every weekend so everyone knows what song's gonna come come next. So yeah, it just frustrated me. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do my own night instead of complaining about it because I used to just write Facebook statuses about it all the time and like complain and do nothing about it. So I thought, you know what, let's do our own night. Did our f I'm trying to think when was it? I think it was 2016 our first night. Did it at Fruit. Uh, and big, big space to fill. That's what I mean. Night. First night. I mean, obviously we didn't fill it, but we, I reckon we got about. I think it's a three hundred cap, and I think we probably got about one hundred and fifty people in there. I'll trump you on this. When me and Carl did our first night at Function, Functions, how many? Ninety six. We had ninety six there. Yeah. Ninety six, and it's about oh, what's the capacity? A thousand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trump you on that. Yeah. One. <laughs> so we did that, man, and it was a success. Like everyone had a good time. We had like. D we had, we had like some decent DJs like I think you, do you know Amwa? Amwa, no. I don't know if he was mates with your brother. I'm not too sure, but Amwa, yeah, he, he's sick DJ. He's one of the he was one of the better hold. In fact, he was probably the best hold DJ. Where's he from? He's from Hull. Is he? Yeah, yeah. He's a Hull boy, but uh, he's not. He don't live in Hull no more. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, he don't live in Hull no more. I don't think he even DJs anymore. But he came back for it. DJed for us. Yeah, we had a, we had a, we had a, I think we had about three DJs, uh, and we did we did well, but then like Fruit just said, like they didn't like the people was attracting. Mm. So we've had that. Well. We've had that. It's it's the same owners as well. Like. So we was just like, it really got us down to be honest with you, because like we did a good night, there was no trouble at all. So what do you put that down to then? Well, I, I don't have a clue. They're saying they don't like the people that, that come there. But I've been to loads of like, because obviously me rapping and stuff, like in the city, there's, coming up there weren't many like, well, not not saying there, weren't, there wasn't any uh, rap-driven performance nights. So mm -hmm. every time I've performed, it's always been, it, every time I did perform back then, sorry, when I was on the come up, it was always sandwiched between like, an indie band or an acoustic singer, but like them indie rock bands, man, like when they're going mad and like moshing and all that oh, sort of stuff. Oh, it's mental. Aggressive, man, like proper I've never like understood aggressive it, environments. I'm thinking there was none of that at my night, but you've just said, you've just X'd it off and said, no, you can't do another one because we didn't like the people that was there, even though there was no trouble. So yeah, we had, we, we had our B and our bonnet for a while about that, like. Proper. Did it didn't your confidence? Yeah, it did. It did. I was like, we we're trying to do something different in the city. Like the people are no, the people are supporting, but 
the powers that be are not supporting. So I, yeah. I was like sort of like mad about that. And then we just had to move on. And I think as well, because Fruit used to advertise themselves as yeah. an alternative type of place and yeah. open to all these mm. different types of music. Mm. And for the old owners at the time now, it's, it's not, a, who's owns it now? It's owned by Matt. They've Matt changed Page. the name, Matt Page. Yeah. yeah. So they've taken over. So that's nothing against what it is now. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, priding themselves on being this alternative place and having someone like you guys come in, you know, giving your alternative sound to mm. what you're all about and then saying, no, we're not having you. Yeah, it fucked my confidence yeah, up massively. Yeah, it was like, and obviously we was like, the, we was just, yeah, we was just gutted. And then, then we went to, so we didn't do one for a while after that. And then we went to Trinity Bar. Okay. And it, again, it was successful. We had more, I think we probably had more people in than what we did at Fruit. So what year was that? I reckon it was maybe the same year. Oh, okay. But but later on, uh, but it just wasn't the right venue because, like, I don't think the guy who was running it, he didn't want to just have us. Basically, he wanted it to still be open to the public. Right. So people who had bought tickets and stuff <coughs> uh, would have obviously paid and then there'd be just, like, random people coming in and they didn't really get it. And yeah. It just, nah, it just wasn't, it wasn't the right place, we didn't think. And then we went to the Adelphi after that, probably about a year later. Uh, and the first event we did was the Flex Party. Uh, and, yeah, that was a big success, that one. So we got off to a great start. And then, yeah, we just kept on doing them. But like like we like we said, like, off, off, uh, off camera and... and before we started recording, like you do have rubbish nights. So I remember yeah. one night we there was what we couldn't we couldn't get our head around it. So <laughs> we'd done one night, uh and it was we sold it out. Mm. Then the one after, no one was hardly there. Same yeah, there. same we've been there before. I and remember we what? was we were just scratching our heads like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> and as well, because you'll have been really trying to learn the promoting gear. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. you're analysing everything. Yeah. I remember to, uh, another example when we've done a listed before is um, Halloween. Now, we knew why it was empty for us because, so notoriously, every Halloween, different language used to do their parties. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, number five, aware, yeah. right? So, been clever promoters like we were starting out. We thought we'd do the night before, thinking, yeah, we'll avoid it, but not really realising really that it. everyone's going to go out on the Saturday yeah. and not go out on the Friday. Yeah. So, we'd booked. Dale Howard, who was a, you know, a relatively well-known deep house producer. I think it cost maybe was he a grand? Was he was he a grand? So we paid a grand for him, and it was tickets were a bit slow, and we just thought, I'll right, just pick up on the night. Yeah. So maybe we'd sold five, five, yeah. So we'd sold maybe five tickets. We thought it's Friday, it's Halloween, everyone's going to come dressed <laughs> up, everyone's going to have a fantastic time. So, yeah, um, the night came, we took Dale out for food and he asked how's tickets going and we're like, ah, not really that good, mm. but um, it's probably going to pick up on the night because it's Halloween. Mm. Anyone can sell Halloween, mm. obviously not. So we got there, did our event and we must, and it was Tunnel, luckily, um, which is a capacity yeah. of like 200, 200 is it-ish? Yeah. So yeah. it's a capacity of 200 and I think we had 50, 50 people turn up. So again... Very fortunate it's a low capacity venue, but a shit ton of money was lost. Yeah. But it was all learning. I think that's what's key in this promoting game. Yeah. And like what you're going to allude to there, you know, it's it's a constantly evolving process with mm. learning how to promote. And you mentioned before about the PR, the marketing mm, involved mm, with mm. doing an event full stop. Mm. So you did your event, your second one. Was it your second one that didn't do very well at Delphi? No, I, to be honest with you, I can't remember how many down the line it was. I reckon it was probably about our fourth. Yeah, down the line, yeah, it just didn't do well. Even the people at Adelphi was like, they was even shocked because obviously they're used to seeing us do so well and loads of people come through. And then I think that's when we thought to ourselves, we need to switch it up here. We need to start booking acts. So the first act we booked was last year, I think. No, no, the year before that, we booked a, a, a gram MC called Manga Saint Hilaire. Uh, well, I've done a song with, did a song called 01482 with him. Uh, so we got, we had a bit of a relationship and I was like, mate, would you come to Hull? Like, you did a video of that on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I remember that video. Uh, and don't get it wrong, he's not, he's not massive, but any grand purists will definitely know who he was. 
who he is sorry and, and he, to be fair he's going to have a sick year he's, he's done some sick releases so far this year but anyway we booked him he came to Hull very cheap very cheap booking uh, Did it? we did it in a vintage shop Okay. Uh, a vintage shop on White Frigate uh, I, can't, I think it's called Electric Vintage I'm not too sure sorry if I forgot I don't mean to offend anyone but we did it there we did it upstairs such a sick night man it was the same night when uh, Fury and Wilder boxed the first time ah so, okay yeah yeah, yeah. oh you're aware of it yeah yeah so upstairs, yeah, upstairs. Like yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> so sick like everyone loved it I think everyone because it was a secret look we didn't like we didn't tell anyone so we said we'll let you know like on the day basically secret location people came had a sick time probably was a bit naughty as well like I think like I think we was only allowed to have like 70 in there I think we had like about 100 sorry electric vintage <laughs> uh, they knew anyway because they're like, the best ones though there was there was complaining because they said the ceiling was coming down because everyone, <laughs> everyone was stamping and going mad but that was so sick so then we thought you know what we need to start doing acts and then after that we booked devil man which was insane we did that at adelphi summer sweltering like over 200 in there like mad 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 like such a sick night and then we did jammer after that that was quite recently uh and then we've got temper tea coming man yeah so make sure you go and get your tickets i don't know when this is going to be coming out but i'll plug it anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah go on you can plug it tell us all about yeah temper tea 9th of uh april the day before good friday so you won't be at work the, the next day come and have a have a sick night uh tickets are on skiddle yeah the, the ticket links in my bio these kids bio and joe the third's bio yeah man if you if you like grand music you like rap music anything in between garage funky house come and have a come and shake your leg on the 9th of april so do you think the gram scenes a lot uh, it's on the up in hull would you say or in yorkshire on a hull in yorkshire in a hull like yeah there's always been loads of gram spitters like sheffield have got some sick spitters leeds uh yeah like Sheffield and Leeds have definitely got some hard spitters even like places like Bradford as well good spitters mm. definitely in Hull I'm not too sure man there's some there's some there's some good guys do you know what I mean there's a kid called Pooley he's he's, he's decent he's off he's off North Hull uh, in terms of grime that's probably where it it stops really with him uh, I mean there's a few young kids uploading YouTube videos and stuff like trying to hustle and stuff gotta respect them but there's there's some good artists though. There's people like I mean people like Live Lands. He he don't make grime music, but he makes like sort of alternative hip hop. There's a kid called Downtown Coyote. Yeah, sick. Like he's very very good. My brother that's mentioned him before. Oh, is he? Yeah, mm. he's he's young and he's very very good. Like he sounds like global. I think like I think he'll he'll, he'll do a lot. Uh, there's a kid called Hybrid Kid. He's he's good. Connor Feeling. Felix, he's good as well. So there's a few bits and bobs, but actually as a grime scene, nah, I don't really think there's there's much going on really. I mean, like I say, people are just quick to, quick to quit. Yeah. There's a new MC every every week, but you don't hear from them. They'll they'll do one Facebook video, and then the what? Then you won't hear from them again. I think what there is is this is going back to when you started out yeah. you didn't have many avenues to get your yeah. music out as such i think you like i said it's, before you had to rely yeah. on the cds it's, it's crazy sorry to interrupt it's crazy how many artists and mcs there was when i first started and then how many there is now mm. do you know what i mean all, all you could say my class my class of 2011 there was quite a few people out by then but they're not really around anymore why do you think that is just little commitments or Commitment. do you think they're not getting these? I, just, I think as, what you need in music is, you, uh, you know, it, it's very egotistical. Mm. Yeah, you need, it's, it's very hard when you're not getting that support and that massaged mm. ego, uh, ego massage sort of mm. thing to carry on. 
doing it because you feel like you're losing the love for it mm. because no one's interested in what you're putting all your mm. effort into mm. and I think when so going again when you were starting out just handing out CDs mm. there's a lot of different avenues to almost get shut down whether mm. your Spotify players are mm. to what, the, mm. what they should be your SoundCloud players whether your YouTube views aren't getting up there mm. so there's a lot of ways for it to diminish your confidence mm. nowadays compared mm. to what it was back then yeah. sort of thing because you was just literally handing out yeah. CDs and you, it, it, you know what Tom it is hard it's really hard. It's hard to keep engaged. It's hard to keep motivated. There's days when you want to quit. But you know what, mate? Life's hard. Mm. Yeah. And if you, if you really want it, you'll, you'll keep on going. Do you know what I mean? There's been, like like I said, like I've come up in a, in a mad way. Do you know what I mean? Like on my own, really, like I, like I said earlier, like no one really giving me a, like I did have, I, had, I did have Stu, but Stu's not in my world. Stu's in a, Stu's like a punk guy. So you can only tell me so much. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I've had to go and and self motivate myself. Do you know what I mean? Even my even my my right hand man, Crafty, at the time when I wanted to start taking music proper seriously, he went travelling. Mm -hmm. And do you know what? That that's that was his purpose. That's what he wanted to do. Uh, the thing is, life's hard, and if 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 you're not willing to put in the hard graft, then it's not for you. If 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 a couple of knockbacks are gonna stop you from doing it, people not sharing your music people not giving you a pat on the back all the time, people like not coming to your shows and then you're not you're not ready for the music game, basically. Yeah. You, you, you're not ready and I think that that's where a lot of Hull artists have, have gone wrong. Do you know what I mean? And obviously family gets in the way. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm not dissing people either. Mm. Like commitments do get in the way. Do yeah. you know what I mean? There was a kid called Liam Start, sick rapper, one of Hull's best rappers. But... He had two young kids, do you know what I mean? He had a house to, to yeah. fend for, do you know what I mean? So I understand certain people can't. Yeah. I'm lucky I don't have kids. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't have all the big commitments and stuff like that. So in a way, I'm, I'm sort of blessed and I understand that. But people that haven't got them excuses, they've got no excuse to not be to not keep, keep on doing it, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's a shame, but that's just the way it is. Yeah. So, what's your preferred avenue now to get music out there and to get your head sort of thing? You say you don't use the mixtapes anymore. Yeah. Uh, what What do you use to get to get people to hear? So it's just music? it's just obvious. It's like you know now it's obviously Apple Music, your Spotify's, SoundCloud, YouTube. Do you know what I mean? Like always having content so that people can go see. Do you know what I mean? Like last year we we had a great year. We had we had. We had a song called Men Behaving Badly that did, did did a lot. The year before, we had Darcy. Yeah, man, now it, music's changed now, so you've just got to... And I think what's stepped you above the, like, above the rest of anyone that I've really seen in, whether it's rap, whether it's grime or mm. anything like that, I think what's important with you is your content has always been spot on. Mm. You've never lapsed with your content. It's never mm. been like low quality. You've mm. always invested in making a music video, yeah. for example. Nine times out of ten, yeah. if you feel like this song's going to be of any relative yeah. decent, you, 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 you're putting mm. the time and you're putting mm. the money in to try and create a video. Yeah. Even like from your artworks, your artworks yeah. are always spot on. Do you think that's what takes you to that next level yeah. what's puts you above the rest yeah i think it is because you, you've got to think about that at the end of the day i'm i'm a i'm, I'm a brand i'm a business mm -hmm. and, I, and i have to carry myself accordingly if i if i want to compete with all these top guys like i say i the competition i don't have no competition locally mm. My, i look at them guys your skeptors your J Husses, your mm. Stormses, your Daves, your Wretches, your Gets, your Kanos, like the guys who I grew up listening to. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's who I look to. I look at their artwork, I look how they promote themselves, their PR, and I take inspiration from them. And I think it's important. I think, because Hull's quite a humble place, we don't like to big ourselves up. No. Do you know what I mean? We're, we're very, we're very humble. And I am humble. I'm a very humble guy. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying I'm not. Uh, but, Maybe sometimes that we we as 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 a city we don't have the confidence, and I again it's because point. and I think it's because in my, our world we've had no one in in my genre of music in Hull, we've had no one to go to and look up to. No. Obviously in the band scene, you've had like things like the Paddingtons and Beautiful South and people like Roland Gift and Mick Ronson, yeah. like people like that to look up to. But in rap, urban music, there's none. I want to be that guy. That even stems back to when you were talking about how your accent was not 
when you was rapping, it wouldn't yeah. be the whole accent. You'd yeah. be emulating the American, the American yeah. accent. Yeah. So again, you know, you had to develop that confidence yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, because you definitely have to, uh, like, mate, like, when I used to perform, head down. Yeah. Couldn't wait for the song. Couldn't wait to get the song out. Song to finish, sorry. Yeah. I'm like, yes, I've done it. I didn't fuck up. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mess up the lyrics. Do you know what I mean? I was like, I was scripting onto yeah. the mic so tight and just head down, no confidence at all. And then I don't know. You like, obviously, you carry, you, you, you keep on doing it, you keep on doing it, you keep on doing it, and you just get confident. Do you remember where your first gig was? My first gig was at the Adelphi. Was it? Y- yes, I believe it was. Yeah, like probably about fifteen. Me and Crafty on stage, like distorted mic and sound want the greatest but we're just spit we're just just spitting bars i think it was to be like an open mic foot sort of thing and like we did that and then my mum bless her she got me and crafty a couple of gigs at like a couple of community centers and stuff i remember i remember me and crafty doing one at a uh, north brand zone community center and all the lads came and like there was a lot there was loads of little kids as well like effing and blanding and like <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one thing that I've always noticed with you. You've had that strong social circle that's always supported you. And I'm talking like from the very start. Yeah. You know, I always remember we used to work about Marcy earlier. Yeah. There was Smear as well. And yeah, it was all yeah. like a close yeah, group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you was all, I don't, I don't even think you all went to the same school. No, like no that. It was a we- it's a weird one, that. It was yeah. real weird. Like, I don't like to call it a gang, but it was a gang. Like, it was like... It, well, was a ga- it was a, it was a gang before we would call it a gang. Do you know what I mean? We, we was always together. When like, it was all like LA's under 18s, yeah, she was always always together. Emery Lloyd's and TN Caps <laughs> and Rock Ports. Like who was the, and I was with some of them last night. We was in we was in Tribal on Kingswood, and like yeah, man, I, I've been lucky. Like and there's but there's definitely been times when I didn't think they supported me, and yeah. I think I think they'd all be honest and say like there was definitely there in spirit. Yeah, so they'd come to my gigs. But I only think it's been the last two years when the thought have they jumped on the hype train? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, I, I, <laughs> it's 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 hard to, and it's it'd be unfair for me to say they jumped on the hype train because they have always be, they have been there, they have come to shows. Yeah. Uh, but there used to be times when I used to get mad with they didn't share my songs. And uh, okay. I used to get real like in my feelings, you know yeah. what I mean? Get they'd real. Cut you deep, and yeah. they'd just be like, uh, it, uh, "Oh, I'll share it later." Yeah, yeah. Be, <laughs> and you know what? They might not have rated it. They might not have rated it, and they probably didn't because probably they didn't think I was good. So yeah, I used to hold that to heart. But then at the end of the day, I, I, I love them, man. They're my boys, yeah. aren't they? But yeah, and I think it's only been probably the last three years they're thinking, you know what, he, he's onto something, you know. Like he keeps on getting bigger and bigger every year. So obviously we're going to we're gonna full on jump in and support him. But I get it, that's life. Yeah. I'm not going to cry and moan about it. Like I said, I did used to get upset about it, but I'm, I'm older now, I'm mature now and I, and I get it. But yeah, man, like I love them to bits and yeah, that they're there, man, the support. Yeah, I can't stress enough. I just remember, I'm talking even from when I was like 14, 15, yeah. 16, when we was going to like the LA's under 18s. Yeah. Was, it, was it even Evan and L yeah. under 18s yeah, back Evan in the and day? Yeah, and like position and that, yeah. He was just literally always together. Yeah. And I, th- I, th- I think that's what's, when you're in this type of game, I think that's so important to have that close-knit group of people. Mm. That, because as well, when you've got an idea, mm. there's nothing worse than having to just show, like sitting over it by yourself yeah. and just trying to think. Like you end up either talking yourself out of actually doing it, yeah. or you, you don't have a good. It's just so important to be able to like bounce it. Like I have Kyle, I have Jack, yeah. I have the residents, so we can yeah. just bounce ideas yeah. off all the time. You've had you've you've maybe had that from such a young age because yeah. you've come up with something. You came up with something so unique in yeah. Hull, totally unique that yeah. nobody else was doing. Mm. So when you was, it's almost. You, it was a challenge for them to try and support you, sort of thing, because mm. it's so uh, different. Yeah, and yeah, and I agree. I think you de- you've hit the nail on the head there, because I think because it was so new, totally new. I think if I was in a band, it would have been different because mm. it sort of would have been cool. Yeah, because remember that one, even yeah. in the clubs, what yeah. he was doing. It would have been cool to support someone who was in a band, but because I was doing rap. I think they probably thought, oh, well, if I share it, some of my other mates might take the mickey out of me and stuff like that. And, you know what I mean? Caring about what other people think. But obviously, as you mature, everyone matures. Everyone, and in the end, it's like, who cares? Chad who's following his, his passion. He's following his dream. And we're going to support him. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, my my boys have had my back, man. I can't lie. Definitely. And obviously, I've got Joe and D's now. Mm-hmm. So my new crop of like 
friends and like yeah we're just out to take over the world all uh, together so, yeah man like D- joe's a sick dj like we like J- we basically bullied joe to be our dj so we bought him a pair of decks like full support that yeah because like we, we didn't have a dj we and our we couldn't yeah i can't even, well, can't even all think we, all, all, we had, all i used to do back in the, so when i first used to rap all it was was my my mac and i used to just press the space bar and the song would come on and then as it finished sometime with a mad long intro long mad long outro so i'm just there like talking and saying like just wanting the song just to finish because i don't want to like spoil the rhythm and just tear my back to the crowd and press the space bar to stop it. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it was just me and my laptop and the microphone. And then obviously DZ came in and started being my hype man. And then we needed we needed a DJ. If we wanted to compete with everyone, everyone had a DJ. Again, that's compared, like when you say about you're trying to have such a high standard, yeah. you need to have that, you know, your hype man, like you say, and your DJ yeah. behind you. Yeah. Um, to try and keep that almost like professional feel sort of thing. Definitely. So... God, that's something that I take into. Like, Trust we're me, We're so fortunate that we have so many DJs in our city, in our yeah. scene, sort of thing. To be in a position where you have none, yeah. all that really puts you in the shit. <laughs> yeah, man, it was mad. Like I remember Joe's first two, Joe's first two performances was one at Welly when we supported KRS One. That was his first ever time he'd ever DJed, and then the second one was when we did Radio One Big Weekend on the introducing stage. That was his second gig. His second gig so was he, that. So he's been fr- he got thrown into the deep end. God. Into Do you know what I mean? So yeah, we've had to like. I think people don't get the come up. The come up's been mad. Like you need to realize. Like I've done shows where, like I always remember one. Sh- there used to be. A, there used to be a festival called. There used to be a festival called Trinity Festival. I think in the town centre, and I remember I did it in one of the bars in Old Town. I did a gig and literally it was just like back, back uh, you know when it's just like background noise yeah like no one's even looking at you like people oh. are having, people are having the been sun- there been people there. Are having the Sunday dinners yeah while you're just wrapping your heart out man no They're one's almost even- like looking at you saying just turn it <laughs> yeah, down a bit we're turn, talking yeah turn it down like I've done some <laughs> mad gigs like I remember doing one at uh, Ringside where I was the last on and no one was there and the band before me felt bad because they were packing up to leave and the band that was on before me stayed just to watch me perform. Like I've had some mad gigs, like and people don't get it. No one that gets the heart, the, the hard, yeah, especially as an urban artist in the city at, at that time, I was just performing anywhere just to try and get the experience. Yeah, And literally I'd, I'd be performing in between indie bands and like an Ed Sheeran wannabe and no one would be there to see me and I'm just there and then I've gone from that to being arguably Hull's biggest act 100% and when you're talking about BBC Music introducing yeah. you was almost like the flagship Hull yeah. person for yeah. it yeah How they've so, really supported you yeah that. so we've every time we've been on yeah. like me and Kyle have been on BBC Music introducing your name's always brought up we always think god are they going to talk about us instead of Chino <laughs> do you know what I mean so <laughs> so how supportive have they been um, like Unreal, Katie Noon, Alan Raw, both of them fantastic Sorry, to deal with. Yeah, great fantastic people. Fantastic to deal like, with. Like again, I probably owe a lot of my success to them. Like twice, I've been the BBC introducing track of the week on one extra. First with Northall Estate, and then second with Men Behaving Badly. They're always trying to push my music to one extra. Always, I've been in countless times. I've done like live lounges and stuff there. Speak to Katie. Uh, quite frequently on emails and stuff always see Alan great people man like anyone who wants to anyone who wants to like upload their track I suggest you do it I'm always telling like uh, Felix who I've mentioned before I'm always telling him to get his tracks up on there downtown as well I've told him about it he's he's had success with them as well like it's just a great avenue anyone who's doing music needs to upload their music to the uploader because you don't know where it could go yeah I think it's with it being so local and yeah. they, 
I, I, yeah, I can't stress enough how much they invest their time and effort in supporting mm. local talent mm. and that's whether it's bands mm. whether it's DJs mm. whether it's rappers whether it's anything mm. they're always going to give their time and mm. effort into all different types mm. of music and all you have to do is just literally go onto BBC's website and just upload it mm. and it's as simple as that and mm. they'll get back to you mm. so when you did BBC Music introducing, mm. what was that like on the stage? That when it was the, oh, it was a bit annoying, bro. I can't lie, you know. The reason why is because obviously beggars can't be choosers. I'm absolutely so grateful for the opportunity. Do you know what I mean? Like Storms, he was at that festival. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like there was big, bigger acts at that festival. The only annoying thing was is to put me on first. Yeah. So I was the first act of the, of day, the day, and I and then. If that won't work, I'm competing with that Zara Larson. That's a pretty hard one to go. So against, she no. was she was the first act of the day as well, and it was it was such a long process getting in. Ah, okay. So literally, when we started performing, by the end of the performance, it was busy. It was busy. Yeah. But at the beginning of it, like it was dead. Like yeah. there was no one there. It was so frustrating, and like everyone was like cheered. Like it was so hard to get in. And then I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then I went the next day. And then I realised how long it was to get in. It was so long, like... Was you on your own again? Oh, no. Was there three of you there? There was three of us then. Ah, that was right, Joe's okay. first gig. And then, yeah, oh, it was yeah. It was a great It was a great day, though. Like, the Tretters, amazingly. Like, we felt like we were celebrities and stuff. Like, it was proper sick, man. Like, that was, like, definitely one of the highlights of 2017. 2017 was, like, when I think the music started going to the next level. So how did you start noticing it? as you say going to the next level what was the so I've uh, I did a song called Flex uh, in 2016 is that your biggest track would you say nah Darcy's my biggest is Darcy track Darcy biggest yeah. one would you yeah oh yeah, yeah of course yeah. yeah so Flex again that's when it's it started bubbling a bit so, again sorry to interrupt you yeah. there when you're talking about that video that Jack was just mentioning there about uh, Annie Mac and Mike Skinner oh, yeah. playing it on radio. Oh it? man, it's dope, man! Dope. And that was like literally, dope, and that man. just shows you the you know right place, right time. Oh my god, bro! And that how was... and how how all it takes is just that the little breaks yeah, like that, bro. Like and just that... that, and it was just a quick conversation saying, you know, we'll play, we'll we'll play it now. Yeah, it was, mate. Like, so let me talk. I talk about Flex fair. So Flex basically 2016 released that and. Uh, just put that on Spotify. <clears throat> Didn't think anything of it. And then I follow a guy called Austin Darbo. Anyone who knows anything about like UK, like black music, like he's the guy, like was the, he was the senior editor at, uh, well, I think he started at One Extra. Yeah. Then he went, he, then he became uh, the senior editor at Spotify. And then now he's at Apple Music. He's like, he's a, he's a Don. I sent him a tweet with Flex. Again, going back to the artwork. Yeah. He, uh, the yeah, it was the Fanta yeah. bottle. Yeah, he tweeted back saying, "Love the artwork, love the song." So I was buzzing. Who did the artwork? It was uh, Ollie Marshall. Was it Ollie Marshall? Yeah, that did it. Big up Ollie. Bankside Ollie, Gallery. Ollie's a very talented guy, but yeah, yeah he did that, uh, and didn't think anything of it. And then my, they, these times there, I didn't really know about Spotify and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then my mate message me saying, oh, mate, you're on the Graham Shutdown playlist on Spotify. And I'd heard about the playlist, but I didn't really know about Spotify, like I said. And then I was like, nah, you're lying. They sent me a screenshot. I was like, whoa. Then obviously I tweeted Austin, said, thank you very much. And then he, he like used me as an example. He quote tweeted it saying, see what I mean? Like, you don't know if you don't ask, blah, blah, blah. So yeah. I was buzzing. Obviously got on his radar. And then, uh, yeah, like obviously... That was like a local classic. Like every obviously the videos when I, the videos loads of people uh, singing the song. Yeah. So I got loads of people to send me videos. Again, the fans were just so like brilliant, man. Like it was quite stressful doing that video, but <laughs> they all came through with some great imagery. So man, I was buzzing with that. So that did quite quite a lot, and then released a few other songs after that. Nothing really kicked off. Well, yeah, well it did. Just yeah, keeping consistent. That's I the did. Thing, I, I, think. I think it did kick off because obviously NHE became. The introducing track of the week, NHE was in the Guardian newspaper, NHE got premiered on ID magazine. So yeah, I can't say nothing happened after Flex, it did. And then, uh, yeah, fast forward, Darcy, that was just the, the gift that kept on giving, that, that song. It really was like 
everything just well, the only frustrating part about that song was we should have got more radio play like a bit frustrating one X didn't really support it but I didn't have a plugger I didn't know about radio plugging back then Yeah. and I think if I did have a radio plugger and that was presented I do think it would have done well but it was a smash on Spotify it's on like nearly 2 million nearly yeah 1.7 no, it's on two point eight, mate. Yeah, it's, it's on two. It's on two. It's on two point eight million like streams alone on Spotify. Uh, it was, yeah, that was a that was the gift that kept on giving. I think that song is the eighth longest song to be on Gram Shutdown. Three hundred and eight days. It was on that playlist. So nearly a year. So how did you go about making that? You know what it was sponsored. I think DZ still got the video of when we finished the song, and like we're both in balaclavas for some reason. Fair. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> in Orchard Park, just both in balaclavas dancing around his room. I don't know why we're doing that, but we yeah we was gassed, like we was buzzing about it, but we didn't think it'd be that big. Like we knew we'd made a good song, but didn't think it'd be that big. And then yeah, man, the interest like. We had like label interest off the back of it, like just met a lot of people that I never thought I would meet off the back of that track. Uh, like I said, Annie Mack and Mike Skinner play like uh, Mike Skinner's like Deezy's idol. So, so where yeah. was you when you when you first got wind that that happened? I think I was on my mum's couch, you know, <laughs> just ch just chilling on my mum's couch, probably watching some of like EastEnders or something. And then I just started getting loads of. Uh, loads of insta like post not in i mean like insta messages and like people tagging me in the stories and i was like what's going on here and then so uh, talking about me. yeah yeah <laughs> uh, yeah well i thought what's going on and then yeah i just obviously looked at people's stories and were like yeah you're getting played on any max show and i was like whoa this is mad and then obviously it was mike skin who like introduced it saying oh yeah this is this is one of my jams at the minute like i said dz was buzzing like because mike skin is like his idol that's when we thought, yeah, like, we can, like, do this properly. Do you know what I mean? And then shortly after, I quit my job, I think. That year, I quit my job. Which so, takes massive balls to Yeah, do, like. man, I was pondering with the idea for a while, Tom. Uh, but then I thought to myself, music is what I want to do. And I'm a strong advocate of, like, go live your dreams, man. And, like, I can't be telling the kids at school, do that, and then I'm not doing that myself. Do you know what I mean? I, like I used to say to the kids, you can be whatever you want to be. I know it's pretty cliche, but you can. And I feel like, so like this is what I want to get across in this music because sometimes like, I feel like the message can get lost. But for me, I don't just do this music for, for me. Like I know there's like a generation of kids that look to me. Do you know what I mean? And like, not trying to get all like deep and stuff, but me working in the school system and, being from a council estate myself and being from a working class background, the kids have been let down, man, in this city. Like, they, they haven't got many role models. There's not many role models, you know what I mean? Like, I tell you some horror stories. Obviously, I'm not allowed, but in the school system and a lot of, like, bad parenting, do you know what I mean? These kids are out on the streets just doing what they want, do you know what I mean? They've got no one. And I feel like music and art is, is an avenue these kids can go down but they haven't seen anyone. So, you know, when I said earlier, like there's no one that's done it from my from my genre of music in this city. It's important for me to be that guy. It's important for the next Chido or Racker to come along. Do you know what I mean? Like, so that's the pressure that I put on myself. That's why it's great when like we, we did like, we did two uh, school performances last year. We did one on the, the school, which is local to me, uh, Sirius. And then we did uh, Andrew Marvel, my old school, and just like, the kids love it, man. Mm. They love it, like the messages I get is mad. So it's important. Like I said, I do it for just, I do it for them. It's not just for me, like, it's not a selfish thing. Like for me, obviously I want the money and, and the riches and, and, and a bit of the fame, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I think why I'm in it really is to be a role model. Because I understand I am a role model. It doesn't matter when artists say, oh, I'm not a role model. I don't want kids to look up to me. I don't do this, blah, blah. Well, you're in the public eye, do you know what I mean? There's obviously kids going to be listening to your music. 
present yourself in the right way. I ain't gonna lie, some of my music, some of my lyrics are not very kid friendly, some of them. Controversial. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But I want them to to be proud that they've got an artist from who they can look to, look to. What's the message in your music, would you say? Uh, I mean, there's loads of different messages. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not... I grew up different to a lot of my friends and a lot of people. So I want people to understand, like... Like, everyone loves the underdog story, don't they? Yeah. And I would say I've been written off a lot of time, a lot of times in my life. But I've always come back stronger. So I would say, yeah, that that probably is the ultimate message. Do you know what I mean? I'm just the underdog. Do you know what I mean? Like the kid from the council estate who's trying to do things like buy his mum's house and give my mum the finer things, give my sister the finer things. That's me to to the to to, to the T. Like I say, I do this for my family. I do this for my community. And obviously, I do it for myself. So going back onto the schooling element that you're doing. Yeah. So what's that? So I wanted to do a school tour. But, and I hope schools are listening. Like, it was a fantastic opportunity. I was going to do it for free. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And like, you ask the young kids in your schools and they'll know who I am. I'm going to do a free gig and then I was going to do a Q&A after it. Yeah. But only two teach only two schools got back to me i emailed them all i rang them all spoke to people on the phone oh yeah it's a great idea and then in the end only two schools one was the old school that i worked at and one was the school in my local area so i'm willing to do it again i'm willing to do it again because i think it's important like they should want someone like me to come into their school it's 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 a, it's it, in in a way it's like a bit of a behaviour tool, mm. like the like if you behave you can come and you can come you come to a free gig, yeah, to a guy for to, to come and see Chido or record, you know what I mean? So, but yeah, for me it, it's just important because when I was at school, no one was doing that. I would have loved Nothing. it if a local rapper came to school. And, totally agree. Do you know what I mean? So I thought it's important for me to give back. Me, Dee's, and George to go in there, and and put on a good show for the kids. Because they deserve it. Because obviously, when I do gigs, kids can't come. No. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. it was important that we, that that we did that. Because the kids are so aware of your scene, especially at such a young age. Hugely. So, to have that avenue for them to be able to see it live, mm. it only promotes the culture more to them. Yeah. And makes it, you know, more accessible to Definitely. them. Definitely. But at the same time, it's giving them the story of your yeah. underdog yeah. situation and, and how you've come through. Yeah, we took pictures at the end, like literally all for free as well. Like we paid to, to, to lug the equipment about. Like we was there like at Marvel, like it was we, was, we couldn't even get a taxi home. I remember for ages, but we didn't care because we made so many kids happy and that's what's important. Like I'm all about the youth, giving back to, to the young kids. That's that. That's what's important. Nothing else really matters, to be honest with you. Yeah, oh, that's a cracking story, man. Yeah, you know, to man. Tr try and invest it into the youth. That's one thing that our scene doesn't really have because our scene doesn't really have a message as such with the music. And, mm -hmm. But one thing that I'm starting to see is that the young kids are not necessarily interested in the electronic music side. But I have nieces and nephews that are around sixteen, seventeen, and they were well into their rap. Mm stage maybe two or three years ago and mm. they're still liking it now and mm. they're not drawn to what I'm doing mm. they're drawn to what you're doing mm -hmm. so I'm telling you now that over the next few years that music is just going to go back yeah, and it yeah. is kind of now down south you know the, yeah. the, the, how Storms is completely yeah. broke the scene mm. and it's only just because you can't deny that Hull is just maybe I'd, we've had this conversation before me and Kyle we're about couple of years behind yeah, Leeds. Yeah. Leeds is a couple of years behind, say, Manchester. Yeah. Manchester about a couple of years behind, say, what yeah. London is. Yeah. So it's slowly starting to yeah. work its way through. So I think over the next few years or so, yeah. your, your type of thing is just going to go yeah, up. Yeah, definitely. And, and that's obviously why we do the nights. We want to do. We definitely want to do an under-18s. Mm -hmm. so we definitely want to do that uh, so the kids can really get involved. You know what I mean? Like, do something. I don't like... I just don't know the legislations and all that sort of stuff with under 18s nights. I'm you not might... sure myself, but as long as you, 
as long as you're not selling alcohol. Yeah. I don't think it should be an issue. I like we've had this conversation yeah. before. You know, we went to all under 18s mm. and things like that with no issue. And I think it's important to get that youth invested yeah. into. It's almost as well the benefit. The benefit of doing them type of nights is mm. it almost it gives the youth more uh, accessible to what going out is mm. because there's nothing more of a culture shock to you when you turn. 17 or 18 mm, mm. you're going out into this crazy environment mm. it's, it'd be good to warm them up to mm. you know going out in general mm, mm. Um, and also at the same time giving them accessible it makes it more accessible to hear about the music side of things yeah. and stuff like that definitely so. man definitely it's all about them I'll always say it it is because they're the ones that are going to grow up with your music so it's sick I love it man all right, brother. So, if we was to try and contact you, trying to see whereabouts you are on socials, yeah. how would what, what's your tags and things like so that? So, my Instagram is Oraka LD, all one word. Twitter's the same, Oraka LD, O R A K A L D, and then it's Chedo Oraka official on Facebook. Uh, yeah, man, we've got some good, good uh, new music coming. Okay, definitely. I've been a bit quiet. Uh, in terms of music releases this year, out of my control, I'm not going to go into it too much, but it just is. But we're starting prop. When, when will this go out? Sunday, next uh, a week. All right. No, I'm not going to say what I was going to say. Next <laughs> uh, but yeah, you'll not just keep tuned in my socials, and you'll 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 see what's happening. Uh, definitely want to shout out Yankee Land. I believe it's their thirtieth birthday this year, so make sure you go in. Got so many memories there. What in Yankee Land? Oh, so yeah. many memories. Big up Mars. So Marcy and Samia, Yankee Land. Make sure you go there. Uh, I'm trying to think what else I can big up. What about clothing? Oh yeah, the merch. Oh my god, well, yeah. What am I on about? Them? I can't believe you. I'll, my... I'll plug your stuff. Don't worry. The merch. <laughs> the merch is available at Poor Boy Booty. We do need to sort out online. We do, so we can sell it ourselves from our own website and stuff. That is under construction. We will get that done. But at the moment, T-shirts, hoodies, jumpers, caps, rain jackets is available at, at Poor Boy Booty. Uh, I just want to say, like earlier, I might have come across as being a bit ag- arrogant about uh, the local hull rappers and that. <laughs> <laughs> I have got nothing against any of them, but for me, what's important is your professionalism. Mm-hmm. I feel like the reason why we haven't got a scene in Hull and it's not booming is because, like you said earlier, like what you noticed about me is my artworks at a high standard. Yeah, my my music videos are at a high standard. It resonates with people. Do you know well. what I mean? Like I, I const, I'm, I'm constantly putting out content out online, and I'm sure there's so so many sick rappers. But I can't obviously big you up if I don't know about you. Yeah. I can't big you up if you're not releasing constantly. I can't big you up if your stuff is not at a high quality. Like, I'm here to be the, the the pillar post, you know what I mean? Like, I'm here to be the example. Like, you can do it. Yeah. Like, you don't think that you can't just because you're from Hull or you don't have much money or you can't... Have, there's, there's ways and means you can do stuff like... I've been broke, but still being able to release music. I've been yeah. broke and still being able to scrimp and scrape and bring out music videos. It's it's all about prioritising. The Warren's a prime example. Exactly. Like, go to the Warren. Do you know what I mean? Like, we, we're, we're locked down here to help. Like, we're not just as well, like, an elite club, just because people might say, we're the guys who are doing the best in the city. Deezy's actively recording up and coming artists all the time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's a young kid who put something out uh a couple of days ago. In fact it's uh I don't know his name, forgive me, but I know it's do you know the black guy used to own they used to run Sugar Mill. Wayne, Wayne Mason. Yeah. Is it Wayne Mason? Wayne Mason, yeah. 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 His son. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's just released something that was recorded at Room 73. He's only out. just put it out, hasn't yeah. last couple of days. And like it's done sick on the numbers. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Already it's done well. I think he's got over a thousand uh, plays on Spotify. Do you know what I mean? So lockdown, the door's open. If you want recording, yeah. contact me and DZ. DZ might even give you a beat. Do you know what I mean? 
Uh, we're here to, and I've had inboxes off loads of up and coming rappers. I'm here to offer my help. So, because for me, I don't want all this for myself. I'm gonna benefit more if the scene in Hull is popping and it's popping and it, and it, and 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 there's more active people. Yeah. I'm, we're all gonna benefit it, benefit from it. It's not a selfish thing. No. We're all gonna if we're all putting in the work and all releasing content, everyone's gonna benefit. I think people have got, and I think it's the same with every, with, with every scene. It's probably the same in your scene. It's exactly the same. Egos and stuff, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So historically, what you've always had is one house night that's. I won't mention any names that likes to crush other house nights. I know about I know about so, that situation. But yeah. What what you find <laughs> is if you've got to think, okay, you want Hull to buzz, you want people mm. outside of Hull mm. to be interested in what Hull. You want to make it a try and make it as best pioneering city as you can. Yeah. The only way you're going to do that is mm. by having brands working together to because we've all got different avenues of promotion yeah. and we all promote ourselves yeah. through you know each different each individual avenue. That's where. I think that's what you're alluding yeah. to is trying to get everyone together yeah. sort of thing instead of having this not you, you don't really have, I don't do you have a tit for tat type uh issue in what, your with people in your scene yeah, yeah. people have cuz when you're the best yeah when you're the when you're the best MC and you've been the best MC in the city for cuz to be honest with you I don't I I shouldn't even say that cuz I don't want the title to no. have been the best MC People have given me it. Yeah, I don't want to be the best MC in Hull because being the what 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 is that? Being true, the, it's it's nothing. But I've, because I'm the guy, yeah. I've had people send in for me and sit f- people thinking that I've wrote lyrics about them and That's it comes. Nice, you, but, uh, yeah, and, never even thought of it. Yeah, like that. I've had pe- people calling me out on the socials and that. But Cheer ain't going to be getting involved in any tit for tat no. on social media. If you've got a problem with me. When you see me, no, not 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 on a not no. on a not on a beef thing. But no. if you see me, just keep that same energy. Yeah, don't be yeah. saying it on a record or doing social media posts about me or any of that jazz. Or do you not think though that's the nature of the beast with being at the level you're at? Yeah, it's part of the process, and 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 I've and I learned that I've learned that a lot over these last few years. I get it. Yeah, I get. I it's in in, in fact it's it's flattery, isn't it? Totally. 100%. You know what I mean? It's 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 complete flattery, and I get it, and it's part of the process. I suppose the hate and the negativity, as long as it doesn't burst my spirit, yeah, I'm good. Do you know what I mean? Like, and it hasn't. So I suppose keep on sending the shots and keep on, yeah, being petty because, yeah, it's just life. So to finish this one up then, so I'm 10, 11, 12, 13, or whatever age really, mm. and I want to get into this scene and I want to try and emulate the same, not emulate the same route, that's the wrong term. I want to try and make a success of myself and really try and get my artistry out there. Mm. What would you recommend? What's the way to do it? How? What's the? What route should I take? I'd say just, just write. Keep on writing, writing. Try and like, have some concept try and identify your your style and the people that you want to get your music out there to from early it's good to do that from early yeah try and mold yourself into an artist from early as well because then you're more accessible more people will, will, will be able to relate to you be a nice person because i think that's a a gem that a lot of people don't take on board. Just be nice. Because mm. if you're nice, people are going to share your music. People are going to invest in you if you're just a nice, genuine person. Uh, yeah, just just keep on perf- keep on perfecting your craft. Don't be in a rush to put out loads of music. If you write a song, keep on going back to it and back to it to make it better and better and better. Mm-hmm. And then put it out at the right time. Maybe show it to your peers. Try and identify like someone who's going to give you a, a couple of people that are going to give you honest opinions. Uh, that's important. So yeah, but yeah, I think the most important thing is just try and keep on mastering your craft. That's the most important thing. I think one of the key things that I've learned from you is staying true to yourself is one of the most important things. And yeah, if no one can be better at being you than you. Yeah, and there's times, of course, everyone. 
sometimes you might wake up and there's all this because the world's quite noisy, isn't it? Mm. There's so many, especially in a world of social media. Social media, you look f- scrolling up and down your phone, and you see that he's getting popular because he's doing that. So you might want to act like them. Like there's no one better than being you than yourself, man. Yeah. And totally people agree. are going to like if you if you fake people will see through it if it's not really you. Do you know what I mean? That's why a lot of these rappers get robbed and beat up, and because that in their lyrics they try and make out that they're gangsters and, and there's something that they're not. Yeah. And they get tested. They get they call it getting G checked. G checked. Yeah. It's a new term. I've never. Yeah. Heard they call it getting G checked. And then then you'll be on you'll be on Instagram getting your jewelry robbed yeah. of someone because that's what people do now just pull out the cameras do you know what I mean just be real to yourself man all the time that's it yeah that's all I can say really alright brother so again to reiterate your next event where is it yeah where do we get tickets and who is it so the next event is the big one Temper T very big grime artist coming to Hull not every day you're going to be seeing Temper T trust me you're not going to be if you've been to any of our events before, you know how it goes down. It's crazy. But this one is at the New Adelphi Club, De Grey Street, on the 9th of April. Tickets are available on Skiddle. If you can't be bothered to just do that, just go on my bio on Instagram, Oraka LD. Click the link there and buy the tickets. And yeah, man, I'll see you down there because it will be sick. I'll be going. You going, yeah. Carl? Yeah, Jack, you going? Yeah, just go. Yeah, see what it's like, man. And it's. I, I think we do a good job. Do you know what I mean? So you'll have a good time. Right. Well, cheerio. Thank you for doing this, brother. No worries. Really appreciate it, mate. And uh, we'll see you on the 9th of April. 9th of April. Yeah.